So hi and welcome to another video here on port forwarding and today I'm going to be showing you how to port forward Apex Legends on the PC. I'm going to do it for the PS4 and Xbox and if you want to see more of these hit the like button and also don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss them. Now what does port forwarding do? Well it allows you to increase some of the performance for latency and it does this via you opening some ports on your firewall which then allow the game to communicate directly without the firewall having to do some excessive work for port translation or any of the packet inspection that it might be doing. Now some people get some good improvements on this, some people will see no improvement, it does depend on how good your firewall is, but it's certainly worth trying it if you are having performance issues or if you just want to see if you can get a better ping to the game servers themselves. So on the PC the first thing you need to do is launch command prompt and this is to work out your local IP address as well as the router IP address. So if you go to the Windows icon, press that, type CMD, and on command prompt push enter, you should get a command prompt window like so. What you then need to do is type IP config, push enter, and then what you'll be showing is the information for your ethernet connection or wireless adapter, depending if you're on wireless as well. I suggest you use ethernet because it's generally faster and gives you a much better response time over Wi-Fi, although they are getting slightly better on Wi-Fi at the minute. So what we need to do, this is the local IP address, 192.168.1.6, check that, shows you here, IP4, and default gateway is the router IP address, which is 192.168.1.1, you'll need that. Once you have those IP addresses, go to a browser, I'm going for Chrome here, type in your router's IP, mine's gonna be 254 at the end here, yours will probably be 1 or 0 0.1, just check with that default gateway. Log into your router. If you don't know the password on this, check for the default passwords online for your router specifically, or also check underneath the router. Some of them are on there for things like Sky or Virgin. Now, once you're on your router, you need to look on the menu options here. I've got port forwarding. What you might have on yours is port mapping or a few other ones like port translation. So only a port forwarding will all be slightly different. So you'll have to try and work it out what it is on your router. But once you're in, you should be shown a very similar menu to this. And I've got on, which means the port is the port forwarding is on or off. The protocol, TCP, UDP, or both. The source IP, the external ports, the internal ports. Here you might have external port start, external port end, internal port start, internal port end. The internal address, which is a local address, and description. Another thing to note is source IP address could also be remote IP address or one IP address. It just depends on what your router uses and which terminology it's using. So on these, some of these I could use both, but I'm just going to show you here because you might not have both as your option on your router. So I'm going to do independently for TCP or UDP. But if you do have the same ports, you could use both. So it saves you having to do both at the same time. So TCP, this one's going to be source IP address or remote IP address. You might have, leave it blank. We don't know that because we don't know the Apex servers, for instance. The external port, mine's going to be 1024. And then it's going to be, I use a hyphen here and 1124. Well, the reason I use a hyphen is this router allows me to have them both together. And the hyphen means left side start, right side end. So for you, you might have external port start, which would be that. And you might have external port end, which would be that. So another feature on this router is I don't need to put it on the internal one. You can see now it's blanked it out because it knows that it's going to pass that through for me. What you'll see on your routers, you might also need to enter it again on the internal port. They should both match. There is some options to change this, but that's for a different day. So for now, just copy the external port numbers and post them into the internal. The internal IP address will be 192.168.1.6 or whatever you found when you were doing the IP config. You'll see here, that's the internal IP address or local IP address. And the description, we'll just call it Apex 1. What I need to do on this route, and you might need to do this also, is add that rule into place. And now that rule is added. And what I will need to do is save it at the end to make sure the rule is put into place. If I don't save it, then I'll come back to the menu. And what you should do is always come back and just check your rules have been applied and see that the rule isn't there. You also need to make sure it's turned on. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments and I'll try and answer them for you. I've done that for the videos like Fortnite that I've done as well as Call of Duty. So I'm happy to help you out. If you do need me to help you out with your router specifically, the easiest option is to post a, a screenshot of this port forwarding window on Imager, and I can translate what's internal, external for you on the view that you see here on my router. 
Next one is going to be 3216 internal port. So the external port, the internal port, same 3216. And the IP address is 192.168.1.6. Apex 2. You can see this can take quite a while if you've got a lot of ports. Apex has a lot of ports, but it's certainly a bit of an option for you. Again, just this is going to be always blank, this source IP address. So the next one's 9960 hyphen. So my start would be 9960 and end would be 9969. Again, my internal is going to blank out, but you might have to add that and mirror it across. 1.6 Apex. The description here is just so you can reference it yourself, so you get an idea of what what you kind of got, if that makes sense. So when you come to think, well, what's that port number? You know it's related to that description, so it's worth making sure you do that properly, because it will cause you a problem down the road when you're not sure what these ports are. Now, some routers will let you have quite a lot of port forwarding. Some will only have 24. Some might let you have 10. Depends how good your router is. So you might find you have to delete some later on. The next port is 18000. Internals the same. And the IP address is, as always, 1.6. Apex 4. So the next port is going to be 18060. And then. 18060. Now you could have that as a range with the next one, but you'll have a few ports that you don't particularly need. For instance, you could put those two together, but you're going to have a few ports, 60, 59 ports that are open that aren't being used. Because the next one is very similar as well. It's 18120. 18120. Same local IP address. And six. So these three here really could be a range. You could have like here, you could have 18000 and then the end port 18120, and that would work as well if you wanted. Or if you're running out of ports that you can add onto the router. I suggest if you've got the space or the capacity on the router to do it, I'd do it individually personally. A bit more secure. Next one's 27900. So when else said a good thing is that ones, you know, is it insecure to do port forward and you are leaving some ports open? So a little bit insecure. The risk is low. But if you don't, particularly want to take that risk you can always just enable these ports when you're gaming for instance and then just disable them when you're not the next one's 28910 We're nearly at the end of the tcp ones thank god and the final tcp is 2990 oops 29900 you can see they're all to that local IP address. These are all now directly forwarded. So any communication that comes in from the game on that port number, so it uses this IP address and port number, it's almost like it's postcode, will just go straight to that PC with very limited checks, which makes it a little bit quicker. So all the TCP ones are done. These are all the ports you're going to need for Apex for TCP for the PC. Now we're on to UDP. So as I said, you can now go to UDP here. And it's exactly the same. The first port you'll see here is 1024. It's a range and there's hyphen 1124. Works exactly the same. What you'll see though is this port number here matches this top one originally. You remember when I said about TCP? Oops. So I could have had, instead of TCP and UDP, I could just use both. And that means we'd only need to put it into the routing or the port forwarding table once. So I do the option if you have it. I'm just doing it independently so you guys and girls can all see the difference here. Next one UDP, and this one is 18000, and you'll see again, we've had that one before. It's here, 18000. So again, we could use both, save a bit of space. I'd certainly recommend doing that if you're doing that going forward. 29900, we've had this one before. 9900, Apex 12. And then the final port here is a range. So it's 37000 UDP to, oops, 40000. So start port, end port again, remember? Local IP and Apex 13. Wow, that is a lot of ports. Don't forget to click save. So you commit your changes. I have to save it on mine and my changes will now commit to the router because that's a lot of work. So if I flick to basic and come back, all the ports now have stayed. You can see they're all enabled and that's how you do the port forwarding for Apex, for a PC anyway. Let me know what else you want to see. I've also got an Asus 
GT5300 I'm going to be doing these port forwards on. This is a Netgear R7000 with a custom advanced tomato firmware. So, if you've enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you all again. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.